Knowledge Experience. Beyond Basic. <laughs> Man. What's up guys, Willie Shaw here, and I just finished watching the announcement for the Sony a7 IV, and let me tell you, I am super excited because um, it has a lot of things I've been waiting on. Uh, disappointed in some areas, but we'll talk about that later on. And um, just my initial thoughts and my first reactions of the Sony a7 IV coming from the a7 III. Let's get into it. First off, there's a lot of things that I'm really excited about when it comes to this camera. Um, I could kind of go on and on about them, but I made a list of the things that really stood out. Uh, going from the a7 III, I think it's going to be some major improvements with the a7 IV. Uh, first thing is going to be the flip out screen. Um, this is kind of a no-brainer. It's been in the a7S III, it was in the FX3. We expect to see it here. A little bit bigger screen as well, and so I'm excited about that. Uh, so focusing, uh, they have an improved system for focusing. Um, this is exciting to me because as somebody who is usually shooting on a gimbal, um, it, focusing can sometimes be a challenge and manual focusing is one of those things that when you do a running gun, it's hard to do and kind of slow down and worry about all the moving parts. So uh, what I like about this focusing system is they have this new technology for improving focus breathing. Uh, it's called focus breathing compensation and basically it works like this instead of doing that pulsing thing it does when it looks for focus uh, you can now rack focus on autofocus and you can set uh, the settings basically how you like it um, of course i haven't used it but looking at the uh, preview video it was explained very well to where you can rack focus so you'd be able to focus here and then really slowly go back into the other focus without getting that breathing. Um, for me, that's exciting. Like I said, as somebody who runs and guns a lot, um, focus speaking is one of those things that just doesn't look good. And so if I can make it look more flattering, more like a manual focus, then that's a huge bonus for me. Right around the same thing, an improved focus map. Uh, the phase detections are insane. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's a ton of them on there. Uh, and it's just what you've come to expect. We've seen the A7S III with the amazing focus it has. And of course, we can't forget about Estony Tone. For somebody who uses the A7S III, uh, you know that color grading it has been uh, a challenge for lack of a better term. It falls apart easily, uh, but if you get it shot right, usually you can do a decent job. The hard thing is you kind of feel like you're fighting with it. I feel like finally getting that 10 bit color science and having an SNE tone are things that really take it to that next level. Uh, things that I'm excited about because, again, as somebody who uses the A7 III, uh, the colors can fall apart in some areas. And so it's nice and I'm gonna have that nice imaging to work with when I'm color grading and just be able to give myself a little bit more wiggle room in the grading area. Oh man, uh, so this is another feature I'm really excited about. Uh, with it being a hybrid camera, the a7 III got a lot of uh, hate for being a camera that, you know, the menu system, everybody complained about. I actually been shooting Sony for a while, so I didn't have too many complaints, uh, but the improved menu system is now gonna be in the a7 IV with this amazing, like, still priority mode and video priority mode. And uh, these are great because you can save your settings for stills for photo taking and you can also have save settings for video taking along with that the menus change from still photo mode to video mode so they really they really thought of it all when it comes to making sure if you are getting this camera for video purposes it's being served in that nature when i think about the comparison of the fx3 and the a7s3 this is one of the things that i was kind of drawn to with the fx3 was at having a video first mindset um, now with the a7 IV, it has the ability to do that as well. So as somebody who was leaning towards the FX3, I am now really drawn to the a7 IV and I think it actually will be my next camera. A couple more things when it comes to focusing is they have improved the eye focus. Um, again, and one of those things that if you're a solo shooter, maybe you shouldn't talk in heads, people love to move around. And when it's on autofocus, a focus peaking is gonna happen or it's gonna get out of focus. Now you can do it reliably. Uh, they also, just a slight note, have added bird eye detecting, detection. Uh, apparently it's the first time it's been done. I don't know, you know, I don't shoot videos or photos of birds, but if that's your cup of tea, uh, then good for you. <laughs> when it comes to handheld shooting, they have improved the image stabilization. Uh, again, one of those things to be expected with the new camera to have better image stabilization, uh, but this looks very promising, at least from the video that I saw, it looks like another good addition. 
Um, all in all, I think this camera has a lot of things and they hit right on the nail. Uh, the photo quality, 33 megapixels. I uh, looked at some reviews from some other creators online and I was improved improved and I was impressed with the photo capabilities I don't think that's gonna be any issues at all and we already know even with the a7 III the camera's photo taking abilities was amazing so uh, we are getting even better photo capabilities with the a7 IV now let's talk about the maybe one downside that this camera has when it comes to being a video shooting camera um, and that's gonna be shooting at 4k 60 frames per second and having a 1.5 crop I get it, I get it Sony, you have to make sure we don't cut off the people who are gonna be using this video camera and the option to go ahead and get the additional A7S III, but I really wish it would've had the full frame sensor. Um, I'm, I'm okay with it, but it is one of those things that I do wish they would've left in. Um, also, when it comes to 120 frames per second, it's only gonna be in 1080, and the improvement of that, if you're somebody coming from the A7 III, um, the reason I'm okay with these, these changes is being able to shoot these in 10 bit. Now we very much still live in a 1080p world. Um, anytime that I do client work, I'm usually shooting in 60 frames per second on the A7 III and it's gonna be in 1080p, but it's it kind of falls apart again with that 8-bit color science. Now having 10 bit, I think I'm gonna be okay with that. Along with the image sampling, it's now sampling from a 7K sensor down to that 4K sensor. You're just going to be getting a lot cleaner of an image. With the exception of the cropping on 4K 60 and not having 4K 120, um, which like I, I'm not too upset with, I think that having the 1080p at 10 bit is gonna be a huge improvement over the a7 III. And looking at the colors that I've seen from other creators and on the Sony's release video, it just looks so amazing. The quality of image is gonna be very nice. And for the price point, I think they, they got it right. Uh, so coming in at $2,500, I think it's gonna be the price. Um, and I, I'm pretty stoked for it. I think this will be my next camera. Um, I think I'll keep my a7 III as my B camera and the a7 IV will be my A camera. Uh, B camera maybe for handheld shots and my A camera will be on the gimbal. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, let me know what you think about the a7 IV, your initial thoughts, uh, things that you were expecting or things that you feel like they could have improved upon, or if you're like me and think that they've got it right. Uh, that's it, that's all I have for you guys on this one. Um, feel free to check out my other videos and subscribe if you like and want more of this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bruce.